Welcome once again, everyone. Boyd here with you. Well, I'm off to a great start on our little spin drift model kit here. This is, again, the Dollhouse 164 scale kit, an original Aurora release. Aurora originally had two sizes of this kit. They had the really small one and this one. This one hasn't been around for several years, and so they just basically repopped it. It has all the same issues that the original kit did, some some minor fit issues and things like that, and the... Uh, the interior detail is not all that accurate, but again, like I talked about on the moon bus, once you're once you basically put this entire model together and seal it up, you've got a really small front windshield that you can see into. You can't see a whole lot through the little side windows here, and through the dome in the top, there's a you know there's a there's a, a bulkhead in between there, or at least a simulated bulkhead that you use decals for with some kind of ribbing that's in the way, so you can't really see a whole lot. So I'm not too worried about the interior, but I was deciding on whether to build the model in a, you know, the way you saw it most of the time in the television show, which was kind of crash landed on the ground in a sort of a wooded setting, or to build it in flight, as you see for a, for a very brief amount of time at the very first episode when it's in space flight. Uh, but the problem with that is that the kit only gives you three figures the only seated figure is the uh, stewardess character, so you can't have her flying the uh, uh, the spin drift, and the other two characters are standing up. So, without seated characters at the pilot controls, that wouldn't make a lot of sense to have it in flight. So I decided to uh, going forward, we're going to make a little diorama scene. Um, kind of interesting looking at the uh, the television show that the uh, large plants that you see around the the crash ship are really tropical looking which is kind of interesting because it basically looks like they're somewhere in North America most of the time um, which you wouldn't see plants like that but a lot of the stuff you have to remember was uh, definitely leftover stuff from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. I was going through several episodes already I'm seeing tons of stuff that was recycled from that show including a lot of the uh, the jungle sets that they used for all the different islands that they landed on and during Voyage so it makes sense that they would do that. So um, I was able to find some, uh, I basically looked up uh, aqua, you know, aquarium decorations and I found some really cool looking, tropical looking plastic plants that are about the right scale. You can get like an assortment pack for like 10 or $12. So that's what I'm going to be going with. I'm going to keep it real simple. We're not going to make a, a real huge base, just something a little bit larger than the model so I can put a few of those uh, plants around it. I don't want to get it too crowded where you start blocking all the detail off and stuff like that. Just just to give a little uh, kind of flavor of what that scene's supposed to look like. So we'll go ahead and do that. That takes care of the problem. That way I can put my little contact points on the bottom of this just like I did on the moon bus. And we won't have to have any wires or anything. And that'll work out really good. So the next thing was to figure out the lighting of the actual model. I wanted to try to have some of the effects that we saw... Now, when it's in flight, it looks like this little panel in the back here is like a steady on sort of an orange color. But, you know, we see it most of the time on the ground and they just had this kind of slow pulsing up and down action going on at this area here. And these two little uh, intakes here at the front. And, uh, of course, we had a regular interior cabin lighting. And then they had this kind of neat feature here inside the cabin towards the back wall, which was very similar to the flying sub as far as the pattern but it doesn't have all the uh multiple changing colored action going on that the flying sub reactor did uh from what i can see it just kind of you know pulses up and down kind of at the same rate as the outer lighting does and it's either lit in red or blue or green sometimes so i'm going to pick one of those colors probably red because i think that'll look interesting on the inside of the interior now there is an interior accurizing kit coming out for this but I, like I said, I'm really not going to bother with it because by the time you, um, if you build this model and you seal it all up, they do make it so you can have this part removable, but you're going to have a ton of light leaks if you do that, if you put any kind of lighting in it. So I'm going to seal it. So the only thing we're going to be able to see is um, through this tiny little windshield that's probably only about this big, and you're only going to be able to see a little bit of the cockpit. And through the side windows here, you'll be able to see a little bit of the cabin interior, and that's about it. This door does open. There's kind of a little narrow hallway in there with, you know, even if you were to detail that all out, it's not really all that interesting. So um, they do have the open hatches, so if you look through the front window, 
in the background you'll be able to see this you know this panel here or at least the center of it so I'm mainly gonna focus on that now I started off here this comes molded all solid and um, I probably could have masked all these individually and lit through them but I wanted to I wanted to have this look a little bit more clear so I went ahead and uh, opened all these up that took about a good couple of hours um, what I did to make it easier though is I took my grinder and I went on the back side and I um, shaved this down so it was quite a bit thinner and then I was able to just take my hobby knife and basically poke right through it with no problem and and, and open up the entire thing almost perfect you know and only had to do a little bit of uh, minor cleanup with my files and stuff so that that's how I made that a little bit easier rather than drilling that out and filing it you know it's normal thickness that saves you a lot of time you always wind up with a little bit of like really fine kind of rough coarse edges and everything and little burrs on that whenever you file stuff so a little trick that I'll share with you guys that I've used before is you take a little bit of acetone on a brush and just lightly brush over all that and uh, you know acetone is not as powerful as like lacquer thinner or some of the other stuff that will really melt plastic so you just put a little light bit of that on there and that'll smooth all that right out and get rid of all those tiny little burrs and everything that you wind up with instead of going in it for hours with sandpaper and you know cleaning it all up it just kind of melts everything and makes it all look good but it doesn't melt it enough where you lose all the fine little detail and stuff so that piece is all cleaned up and ready to go we'll put a lens behind here I'll back uh, paint it with some to me a transparent red and then we'll light it from behind and that'll give us that nice little lighting right in there um, the uh, engine lighting now as I mentioned, the lighting on this model is, is kind of orange, so noticing that we already had these sort of orange parts here, I decided to go back to my old playbook and and light this through the plastic again like I did on the Enterprise E and do our scraping here. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to power this up and show you what it looks like. And right now you can see it's completely blowing out the camera and it's way too bright, but that's okay because starting out on this, I wanted to you know purposely put too much light in here because... I didn't want to have not enough light and then we'd have some areas that would look dim or you know whatever so what we're gonna do here and keep in mind you're seeing the whole thing light up when I paint this uh, we'll paint it black you know and then we're gonna paint over it with the whole with the with the hull color which will be this orange I'll come in here and I'll scrape all these well then that frame area around it will not let the light come through so all you're gonna see the light coming through these little pinpoints here you know and it'll look a lot more it'll look a lot darker and it'll it'll look a lot more focused and everything and it'll look really good um, and then if it's still too bright at that point I can always hook up a couple you know practice with a couple of resistors on here and dim this down a little bit until I get it just right but I definitely wanted to have enough light to begin with and the same thing we're going to do right here on these uh, again just like on this other part here I shaved these down just a tiny little bit on the back side with my grinder to make them a little thinner so the light would come through a little bit better so that's going to work out pretty good let me um turn this around and show you what we got in here uh i made these little uh brackets to hold my lighting here in the back just out of sheet styrene so across the back i just have one strip of led tape about that long that's right you know about an inch behind this little panel right here and then uh, i've got these two up and down ones right here that you can see which are going to light this this little panel right here when it goes in there and, we, and like I said mainly all we really wanted to worry about was kind of like that center section but it, it's gonna light the whole thing pretty good because looking in from the front windshield is about the only angle you're gonna be able to see that at so that'll take care of that then we've got these two outer ones here where this little piece goes on and uh, that's gonna light those up really good so we'll do all of our light blocking and everything I'm gonna glue this on shortly here I just want to leave it off for now so I could show you what I've got Behind these, I've got two little styrene brackets there, too, that are holding those in place. And so that's all perfect. Um, we're going to sneak our wires over here um, underneath the false floor. I'll kind of lay this in here and show you what that's going to look like. Oops, that's backwards. And we'll come out the bottom, and we're going to have our little contact points. I'm going to fill this in right here. They've got this little bracket here for your uh, stand. So we'll have our contact points on the bottom now this isn't perfectly flat so I'm gonna make our contact points here 
and then on the base itself I'll take the photo etch and I'll bend a little angle onto it so it's almost like a little miniature spring and those will make up the difference for um, this not being perfectly flat and that'll work out just fine so um, that's where we're at so far you guys this will be kind of a short little update here I just want to give you these little updates showing you as we go step by step um, what I'll be doing now is getting this glued on and then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do all my putty and seam work around here and get this all cleaned up and get this section of the model painted, light blocked. And then we'll start working on the interior in the next video. Basically just, uh, you know, paint it and put all the little details in there. It's not going to be hard at all. There's not a, a whole lot going in there. We're not going to use this color here. Um, the green that's actually in there is a much more uh, subtle looking green than this. So we'll we'll get the right color green for that and get that all painted up. We'll do a little bit of detail paint work in the cockpit and get the figures painted and everything. And then um, I'll work on the forward half here next. Now I just want to show you, this kit has a bad reputation as far as fit that a lot of people complain about. But uh, I just want to show you, uh, I'll do a quick little mock up here and show you basically what you can expect. Um, you can see it's all fitting together really good. I'm looking at it up close and I really can't see any big huge gaps at all that are going to cause me any... Uh, problems with uh, light leaks or anything like that. Um, now what I did to make this a little bit better was the first thing I noticed was that these pegs didn't want to drop into these uh, receiving holes here at all. So I just took my uh, pin vise with a slightly, you know, probably the next size larger hole than what's there and just opened those up a little bit. Did the same thing on the side pieces here and that took care of that problem right away. Everything just dropped right down in there and sat nice and tight. So that takes care of that. And uh, the interior parts all seem to fit together pretty good. So I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of problem putting this together. So it's just going to be a matter of figuring out the order i got to put it together in to get everything sealed and closed up while at the same time getting my wiring all run. Now we're probably going to put a couple more. I'll probably put a small little three-bulb strip of LED tape right here to light up the forward part of the cockpit. And another one probably right here to light up the... Uh, the cabin area but I don't want that to be super bright either just bright enough where you can see some light coming out of the windows here and if you look in there you'll be able to see some detail in there and that's about it you guys so we're off to a great start here so the next time you see this we'll have this all put together and we'll start to uh, move our way forward and uh, go from there hope you enjoyed our little update here and this is a fun little build already um, so we'll uh, we'll probably it'll it'll take me a few days to get the uh, stuff in here for the diorama but we don't have to worry about that to the very end so all right you guys i hope you enjoyed this little update we'll see you next time take it easy and we'll talk to you later happy modeling everyone